So what is an ETF? Well, ETF stands for Exchange Traded Funds. Uh, they are mutual funds that are traded in stock markets. So the main difference between a mutual fund and an ETF is, is that a mutual fund, you trade it with the company who's managing it or through very limited number of brokerage companies. However, with the ETF, they are funds that are traded on exchanges, very much like a stock. Um, and therefore, they're very convenient to include into your portfolios. They're already diversified for you. Um, you know, there's a joke about it. there's an app for that, just like that, the ETF. Well, if you have a purpose, if you have a policy of a uh, portfolio, uh, I'm sure that there's an ETF that matches that. And you may not even have to prepare your own portfolio. You could just buy an ETF. I'm sure there's an ETF for that. Um, ETFs may pay dividends. They may not, uh, depending on their purpose. And uh, ETF charge periodic management fees, uh, very similar to the mutual funds, except ETFs are uh, much cheaper compared to the majority of the mutual funds. Anybody can trade ETFs and they're widely available. So let's take a look at a few examples. On Yahoo Finance, I pulled up the um, you know, top um, ETFs in the US. So there are over 2000 ETFs that are trading on New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ. Uh, this is just a very simple um, list. So let's take a look at a few. So for instance, this one is F, U T Y. Uh, it's managed by a company called Fidelity. Um, it's a utilities index ETF. If you look at the price, one share of this ETF is $38.71. And let's take a look at what this portfolio is made up of. So these are the top 10 holdings, which, in, which is about 52.84% of total assets. So half the ETF, the, the fund, the portfolio is invested in these 10 companies. Um, and it's a utilities ETF. So energy companies, energy companies, energy companies, they're all energy companies. And, and therefore, if your policy, if your investment purpose was to invest in energy companies, well, this ETF gives you that opportunity without individually including stocks into your portfolio, you could just buy a piece of an ETF with this similar uh, purpose. Um, one of the ways, for instance, to invest in um, commodities like gold will be to invest in an ETF that includes gold. If you look at the holdings, it will have gold. So that's 100%. So similarly, if you wanted to invest in a country, say Brazil, um, you would have, so MSCI would actually give you um, for instance, Emerging Markets ETF, EEM, which would include holdings from com uh, countries uh, like China, uh, Korea, and, and so on and so forth. So um, there is a BRIC ETF, which is an ETF that includes 36% of their total assets from these 10 holdings, which would include Brazil. So these are basically ETFs enable us to invest in individual um, portfolio purposes. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to invest in utilities, then uh, you would buy a, um, a utilities ETF. If you wanted to invest in a country, you would buy a country specific ETF. So if you wanted to have a portfolio uh, of individual stocks and within your portfolio, you wanted to invest in energy, but you don't necessarily know which individual stock you want to invest in, in energy, well then you could be buying into an ETF of energy. Same thing with a country investment you want to invest in Brazil or Argentina or South Africa, um, then you could simply buy into an ETF that has uh, its holdings in that specific purpose. So this one, for instance, if you look at the uh, expense ratio, it has a 0.64%. So if you remember, if you watch the other video about the mutual funds, 
is the sample that we pulled up over there was 1.35%, and this one has uh, about half that. Um, so another one, for instance, if you wanted to invest in the S&P 500 entire index, uh, this is an index of 500 companies, SPY would be the ETF. The total asset value for SPY is 278 billion dollars and the expense ratio is 0.09 percent. Notice how small this is. Oh, another example for instance if you wanted to invest U.S. Treasury bonds one to three year um, remember or if you watch the video about the Treasury bonds the minimum investment usually was about five ten maybe twenty thousand dollars. Well, with this, you could simply buy a share of this ETF and pay $84.15. This one has a yield of 1.95%, has $19 billion of net assets, and the expense ratio is 0.15%. Um, so, for instance, if you wanted to invest in the entire bond market, uh, BND would have an expense ratio of 0.03%. This is one of the ETFs that I know that has the lowest expense ratio out there. So this one has a net asset value of $217 billion. ETFs are big markets and they provide significant diversification benefit at a very little cost. So it is a security that provides uh, multiple benefits. However, they do expose us to risks that are uh, inherent with the holdings of the ETF. So it's not a, a safe instrument per se. Um, it will have the same risks as the holdings. So for instance, if you invest in um, you know, a, a bond ETF called JNK, this is a high yield junk bond ETF that sells at $107.40, has a very high yield of 5.57%, expense ratio of 0.40%. You know, thinking that you invested in ETF and therefore you're safe, would be in this case uh, misleading because you are exposed to the risks of investing in a junk bond, uh, in multiple junk bonds. So you don't have the risk of investing in a, in a particular junk bond. You are diversified within the junk bonds, but you're still taking the junk bond, junk bond uh, risk. So that's what that that's what ETFs are. Thank you.